just uh, clicked on 10 a.m. and we do have a pretty um, large group out there, so I am going to get moving. Um, and uh, a couple of things: the <laughs> when uh, it was first brought to me, um, doing open house and uh, and the web-based version of, um, I had absolutely no idea what I could possibly contribute. Um, as far as the web and open houses. And then when I got started writing, I couldn't stop. So I've got a lot uh, to cover, and I'm going to um, go over it quickly, but hopefully where everyone can pick it up. It's really not that complicated. It's just a lot of little things. Uh, so with the open houses and how to utilize the web and our tools, we've got three sections. We've got promoting the open house. Um, we also have, I know that Diana had spoke about material. You want to, again, uh, be the area expert. You've got a lot of potential sellers that come into an open house just to number one peek and see what their competition is, um, but also uh, you know, see what you're all about. So you have an opportunity uh, to make a great impression during that open house on a potential seller. And then what uh, we also have uh, web-based wise and using our tools is follow-up sending out little thank you notes, maybe some text, e, uh, text blast. Uh, so I am, sometimes I've got absolutely nothing to show on a slideshow, um, and then other times I am completely um, inundated with statistics. So we do want to first start uh, again with, and I always do this with our slide, and whether or not my presenter, uh, Arrow, is going to work with me today is a whole different ballgame. Um, but what I want to go over here is the chat. Again, I know I do this every time, but we have different people coming in. Uh, we have a little chat box here. That is my number one mode of communication. Um, everyone has dialed in on silent. I am the, uh, the only voice heard right now. Um, and it gets a little cumbersome locking, you know, pushing people in and out. Uh, so what I'd like you to do, and today I am going to do it a little different. I am going to be asking uh, questions throughout. Typically I save it to the end, uh, but because we have different stages of the, um, of the, the session today, uh, I'd like to be able to uh, offer out questions as we go along. So, um, and again, as usual, if you, something comes up and you just want to type it in, by all means do so. I will answer it when I'm ready to go into questions, um, but uh, just type them in as you need. So where we're going to start here is using the web to promote and follow up. Uh, your, your local MLS, obviously that's uh, one of the best, and occasionally, occasionally, it's not a guarantee, no one can tell me why, uh, when you do update your local MLS, uh, you will see that some of the Trulia and Zillow, which we will be showing you today, um, occasionally will have that open house posted. Nobody can give me any rhyme or reason why it's not always. Um, and how it functions. So if you go into either one of those two um, real estate uh, search sites and you see it already posted, it's um, it, it, not a miracle. It, it came from your MLS. Realtor.com, uh, for anyone with the Realty Executives exceptional uh, brokerage, uh, typically when you send in your marketing request, um, normally it goes to Vanessa, but it is um, – one of three people, um, they will update Realtor.com for you. But I am going to get in there and show you how to do that yourself for no other reason um, than people get sidetracked, they forget, oh my gosh, it's Friday, it's 7 o'clock, I'm having an open house on Sunday, what do I do? Uh, so we are going to go in and show you um, how to um, upload that into Realtor.com on your own, and you do all have access. Um, as well as take it down. That's another reason. Uh, Gia, uh, in the MLSs, um, most, of, most of the time our staff is going in and putting that in. But we've had some situations where we've had a seller call up um, either Saturday morning or, or, and had a family emergency. Um, and there are times that we've had to cancel a Sunday public open house. And then what do you do? You have all the, the advertising out there. Uh, so we'll go into showing you how to get into uh, some of these areas to pull it down if you absolutely had to. We hope it doesn't happen often, but in case you have to. Uh, real estate websites, uh, we do have access on the uh, Trulia and Zillow. Uh, so we're going to be going into both of those, showing you how to post. Um, obviously, taking down is just as easy. Um, but what I'm also going to go into there is social media. Now, I know that uh, Diana touched on some websites. 
We're going to talk about the individual websites. I do have some stats on those websites. And best practices, what you can do, and I guess a lot, a lot of what people don't realize, and when I was doing some research on some of the social media sites, not so much uh, Facebook because that's a no-brainer, uh, but uh, the LinkedIn's, um, I went through my uh, my connections and I, I just kind of scrolled through what people were posting. And funny enough, there is a realtor, I'm not going to mention any names, not with our company, it's outside of our company, who simply went into LinkedIn and typed in new listing, $159,000, and the address, great buy. Okay, you can't do that. Uh, anytime that you're soliciting real estate, and I don't care where it is, uh, there are rules and regulations that come from the Real Estate Commission. There are rules and regulations that come from our local MLSs. And we've got rules and regulations that also come from NAR, which is our realtor organization. Um, and what I find is the best way to post on social media is either by our website, linking to our website, because that keeps you compliant with all three, as does the real estate website. So if, our, if your listings, and this is only the listings that are syndicating to Trulia, to, to Zillow, directly from the company. Um, if you're manually putting them in yourself, there's no guarantee that they're going to be compliant. In fact, in most cases, they are not. Well, we're going to go in and uh, just show you the share button, where to find that, and uh, best practice on how to get that in the right location. Uh, CRM emails, and those are email blasts. Uh, that is our Executive Edge. So we're going to go into um, Executive Edge and uh, just uh, show you how to quickly put together an open house piece um, and uh, send that out to your sphere. Um, hopefully you have some people on campaigns, past buyers, uh, or even current buyers that are on drip campaigns, the people that are receiving your newsletter. Uh, we are also going to talk about your newsletter in promoting. If you're one of those agents that um, at time of listing come up with an open house schedule, if you have a lot of listings, if you're a heavy lister, um, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to have a schedule done in advance um, because you haphazardly trying to figure out when you're available um, isn't always the best thing. So a lot of the times during the listing, I discuss uh, when we'll have the open house. This way everybody's on the same page. Um, it's done in advance. They're happy. They're going to be having their open house. So at that point, you can actually uh, advertise it um, hopefully on your next newsletter. They only come out once a month. So um, if it happens to fit into that schedule, that's great. Uh, we are also going to be talking about mobile text messaging using our mobile. Uh, for anyone that was in my mobile class, I did go over um, how to go out and how to use the templates built in um, and create a text blast. Um, and again, there should be a, a database in there of current and uh, past clients, um, even realtors, local realtors, if you're going to be sending out. Um, and you'll notice on my, uh, my little tab here that the word blog um, is actually written in Schiller. It didn't come up uh, as, as, as ugly as it is on my slideshow when I, when I put it into the slide deck in uh, ReadyTalk. Uh, it actually looks very pretty. Um, but I, it is another option, not something that I'm going to be doing today. We are next Wednesday, May 6th. You'll get an invitation tomorrow. We're trying not to overlap invitations. Um, but I am going to be doing the agent websites, the prime agent websites, full prime agent websites. Um, so yes, it, uh, I allocate two hours. Um, but you don't have to stay that long. I, I start off with the very basics, and I can get into this type of thing, which would be blogging. Uh, but if anybody uses Google Alerts, and you'll see occasionally a Google Alert will come up with a property on it, that is because that property has been blogged out. It is a blog that will get you um, some, uh, some internet uh, market share uh, for that particular property. So that's something to think about. Um, again, not going to get into it today, uh, but anyone that is inclined, I will be going over some blogging um, using our Prime Agent website next Wednesday uh, at the Fairfield office. So getting into some stats, like I said, sometimes I've got no slides and sometimes I have plenty of slides. Uh, this frame one that got my email, hopefully you all opened it. This is that marketingcharts.com. This is the slide that I use. I actually incorporate this into my uh, leave behind, my pre-listing, um, and my leave behind on my listing packet. And the reason that I do that is because if you look at the top three, we as a brokerage have affiliate, affiliate memberships or affiliate relationships with the top three 
most used or most used real estate website platforms. Multi-platform simply means it's a combination of desktop and mobile users. Um, so I do use this one just because it makes life easy. Um, so going in there, we're going to be looking at doing our postings to Zillow, Realtor.com, and Trulia. Um, again, having a relationship with all of those. Getting into some Zillow stats, and you can use these um, on your presentations if you like, uh, but why do we post to Zillow? Well, we saw on that uh, market snapshot that it is the number one real estate website, the go-to for real estate searches, so obviously we want to be there. Um, and you'll see here our monthly unique users is 70 million, not bad. Um, and uh, median household income, you got the median age, um, just some information here. If you'd like any of these slides, obviously just let me know if there's something that you want to use. It can easily be found um, on Zillow.com in the Investor tab, uh, but I'd be more than happy to share what I have if it's something that is interesting to you just to get an idea when you're doing our listing presentation um, what, are, what the stats are uh, when, you're, when you're actually um, promoting the Zillow relationship. Um, same thing, we're going to go on to Realtor.com, and as you can tell, I did them in order of that sheet. We've got uh, unique visitors, and this is all monthly, so that's 26.6 million uh, people hitting Realtor.com searching for homes. So again, posting there for our open houses. Um, and then we get into Trulia, and I'm de dealing with the real estate websites first, and then we'll get into uh, some of the stats that I have on Facebook, but our key metrics here. Uh, we've got 55 uh, million for total visitors on Trulia. So just some key things is why we are recommending that you go where you go is because of these key metrics. If this is where the consumers are going to get their house information, they're, they're searching for homes, they're looking for information, that's where you want to be. Um, and then the next one, and we're going to go live drive after that, and we will be staying there. So if you have anything you need to tell me, uh, pop it in the text now. Uh, also, as usual, because I do everything live on the Internet, I do not, while I am there, have access to that chat. So if anything goes wrong with either a black screen or if you cannot hear me, phone is always in front of me, and I can read text while I am on this call. Um, so just pop me a text and let me know whether or not uh, we're having any issues. So the next thing we're going to go on, social media. And again, I know that um, in the previous class there were uh, several mentioned. We had LinkedIn, we had Google+, we had Twitter. Um, we'll talk about there are some usage for LinkedIn. Uh, but we're going to be working with specifically Facebook, and then I'm going to give you the pros and cons of the others. Um, I can go on and show you uh, if it's something that you'd like me to do as far as LinkedIn, Twitter, and Google+. Uh, but we're looking at stats um, and the numbers. Uh, the number of, look at this, seven, 936 million daily active users average on Facebook. So we know that that is the place to go. We know that there's a lot of real estate uh, targeted uh, uh, avenues on Facebook. Um, so that is something that we are going to spend a few minutes on today. And, and again, using those real estate sites to post here is always your best option. Um, I, I do also like the uh, link from our Prime Agent website, so that, um, and we'll talk about We talked about that a little yesterday live in class, um, but I am going to show you what I am speaking about. So just to go into uh, the LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great place to post if you have a niche market, if you are in commercial, and typically only within a group. If you scroll down, first of all, most of us don't spend a lot of, I, I don't spend a lot of time on a lot of the social media, uh, but if I am going to dial in, I am typically going on Facebook, and that's pretty much proven. Um, LinkedIn, if you have a commercial property, you've got a lot of investors on there. Commercial is a very unique business where a lot of it is not in MLS, um, and people will buy out of state. So you will have you know, somebody from California buying in New Jersey, it's all investment depending on what that property is. So yes, if you're going to be doing something with commercial, I don't know how many people have open houses on commercial, but if there is some unique thing that you're doing with a commercial property, um, historic properties is another thing. And again, typically posting in groups. I don't see a lot of haphazard posting on LinkedIn, and what I do see is not always very professional or, as far as I'm concerned, very helpful. Um, and LinkedIn, as far as uh, uh, monthly um, viewers, 
they've got only about 40 million compared to the Facebook numbers. Um, Twitter, same thing. I don't know how much you're going to fit um, in that 140 characters that you're allowed. Uh, when I do social media training and I go into the brain hurting section, uh, we talk a little bit about short code and how to create short codes. Uh, but that would really be the only way to get your open house posted um, on Twitter in a manner that would make sense. Now, Trulia and Zillow do have uh, post to Twitter open houses. Again, for, for what my experience is and the information that I research and the groups that I belong to in social media, unless you are in a multi-million dollar property in New York, not a lot going on for ranches in Passaic, Sussex, Morris, Warren counties going on on Twitter. I mean, we just a lot of our clientele is not tweeting about open houses. Um, Google Plus is really very similar to Facebook. Unfortunately, um, their monthly viewer, uh, viewership is just 20 million. Um, I know that we have some agents in the company that are on Google Plus on a regular basis. I can't show it to you. I do have it. Um, the company has pages on Google Plus just because it made sense. Um, and now they're forcing people that have Gmail to have Google Plus. I don't think you have uh, an option. So my feeling is always you may as well make it look as pretty as possible if it's going to be there. Um, but again, um, it's, it's not for the amount of things that you have to do, for the amount of time that you're spending on the promoting, I would rather see you putting it where people are actually going. Uh, so again, not to, I'm not dissing Google Plus in any way, shape, or form. There's just not a lot of people there right now to spend the time to do the actual posting. So with that said, we are going to share, and we are going to start with the uh, promotion portion of it. So I am going to share my desktop. And again, I cannot see that chat button. Um, and it does go black on purpose. Um, I cannot see that uh, that share that uh, chat box. So if there's anything that anyone needs to share with me, uh, please absolutely send me a text. Uh, and I do keep my eye on the phone. It is right in front of me. So where we're starting, Realtor.com. Again, when you send out your request for marketing on an open house to our staff, typically, um, and for no, uh, actually always, they will go in and they will post it to your property on Realtor.com. Um, I am going to go in and just do a quick login here. Uh, for anyone that is not, let me just get out of this because um, I don't know why they seem to hide this, but just going straight to Realtor.com, on the login, hover over, and you'll see down here you've got the four agents login. That's where you want to go. Again, I know most of you do not have um, the passwords, uh, or you don't remember them, if you need help with that, either reach out to Bertie or myself, um, and we'll be more than happy to help you. You can choose Forgot Password. Um, if, if, you, uh, if you'd like to play it that way, that's fine as well. Uh, you are going to leave your account type to agent. I am going to show you how to do this as agent, but again, because I do not have uh, listings on my own. I'm going to go into the office control panel um, and just show you where the posting comes from there. So I am, you would choose, take your drop down menu. You could simply hit the end so it starts taking you to the ends for New Jersey or Pennsylvania, depending on who's on the call. Uh, your MLS ID is your, is, uh, well, this here is your actual MLS. So we're going to go to, and I'm going to hit the G for Garden State for me. Um, obviously, you're going to hit whichever one that you want to post it in, and you can post in both. So if you're a combo um, in uh, NJMLS and GSMLS, you can absolutely do both. Simply type in your MLS ID, and if, again, if you don't know your password, you can choose Forgot Password. You can either reach out to Bertie or myself, and we can get it for you, um, or if you know your password, even better. Hopefully, I remember mine. I'm not in here all that much myself. Okay, um, and then manage listings is where you would go. Obviously, we are going to see that I do not have any. Um, I just wanted to show you how to log in. So I am going to just really quickly, if you can give me a second, um, sign out, and I am going to go into the office level and hopefully be able to pull up my list there. And New Jersey, and MLS is Garden State. And I am going to hit my own office, and again, hope that I remember the office password. And there we go. All right, so manage listings. Now here you will see that we have 
um, you know, we have our listings. I'm just going to take the very first one. I'm not going to actually post an open house. Uh, but you'll see here if I want to schedule listing reports, edit, we are going to edit listing. And we are going to scoot down. This works the same whether you're in the office of the agent. So you're going to look at yours. You're going to click on Manage Listings. Your listings will populate. You're going to click on Edit Listing. And again, this is also if you had to cancel anything, uh, you would just click on the Open House and add an open house. Again, I'm not going to follow it all the way through. If you already had an open house posted to here, um, as well as history, so there is a history of your open houses, um, it would have populated a current open house. At that point, if you needed to take that down for that weekend, that would have been just a click through to cancel the open house. But here is as simple as it is. This is all self-explanatory. And you would simply click on Save. Again, if you had an open house scheduled, when you chose this, Underneath the schedule, there would be the current open house that you had scheduled, um, and you would have the opportunity to remove it. So that's as simple as Realtor.com is. Um, Garden State, hopefully I have that up here, and I have Garden State and Flex again. So we're going to start with GSMLS. Uh, I am going to have to, again, pick on one of my um, office. So if you give me one quick second, I am going to click here. And I am just going to pick somebody else's listing because I do not have any. So let's pick on Michael. So if I wanted to put anything here as far as open houses, you have your active inventory. So again, you're going to go to agent management. You're going to click on your active inventory, and your active, active inventory will populate here. Simply click the checkbox right next to it. You're going to choose Add, Edit Open Houses. And again, self-explanatory, and simply click on Save. Same thing here if you already had one posted. When you get to that particular point um, in the ad, uh, ad Edit Open Houses, they will have current open houses scheduled here. You would be able to remove them if you needed to remove them for the weekend. This is something that staff will normally handle for you um, when you go in to promote. Uh, but again, last minute cancellations, you would have to go in here. So that is uh, Flex. I don't have um, listings in here, but what you would do, uh, this is the Flex dashboard. If I had listings in here, I would click on here to uh, – where is my open house? Here it is, open house. And again, here, tour of homes, open house. You would put the information. You have add and edit. And again, I don't have a listing, so it's not going to click me through, follow through here. It's just going to tell me I don't have anything. Um, but I would be able to pop in my open house. And again, the same thing if you had something current, you would be able to go in at that point and, uh, and remove it. So that is Realtor.com. Those are our Realtor, Realtor.com. We've got the, the MLSs. Um, I know that in NJ, again, I can't go through all nine of the, or all ten of the MLSs that we have within the brokerage, so I am sticking to the two that have the most listings, um, and that is GSMLS and Flex right now. Uh, if you're on another system and you can't figure it out at that point, absolutely give me a call and I can log in um, to Kyle's and just tool around and get you that information. Uh, but just for today's purposes, we're going to stick with the GSMLS and the Flex. Um, and for anyone that doesn't know what Flex is, that is our Pikeway in Pennsylvania uh, MLS, and that is for our Milford office. Okay, so now we're going to get into the stuff we really like. We've got Trulia. So Trulia.com, if you haven't been in your profile, shame on you. You really need to get in there if you need help with that. Not doing it today, but I will be more than happy to help you uh, if you give me a call. Um, everyone does have. We've actually created um, profiles for everyone that hasn't gone in there and done it themselves unless you've only been here in the past month. Uh, you do have a profile, you just don't know it. Uh, but give me a buzz again if you haven't been in there. I am using Kyle's for today's purposes because, again, um, I need to have active listings. So when you log into Trulia, this is not the dashboard that it looks like, but you will see that there's a little icon right up on the green bar that says My Listings. You would simply click on Manage Listings, and it will take you to your active for sale listing inventory. I am going to just scoot down to one that I know I already discussed with him that I can play around with. So here is the listing that I am going to be working with. This is actually Kyle's listing. And you're going to click on Edit Listing Detail, or actually in this one it's Add, add Open Houses. Hopefully it will open. And you can do multiples all at one time. 
pick a day, choose a start time. I mean, this is all self-explanatory here. You're going to pick a day. So let's just say we're going to do it on Sunday because we're not going to do it on Mother's Day. Begin time, end time, and then click on Save Open House. Simple as that. We're not going to be doing that today, uh, but it's as simple as that. The other thing I wanted to – I am going to leave my page. Actually, I don't even need this anymore. We're going to just shoot right to Zillow. Same thing, Zillow.com. Uh, if you haven't been in here, again, shame on you. Uh, if you need help with an agent profile, by all means, reach out. I will be doing some live classes. Um, actually, I'll be doing some webinars on the uh, Trulia and Zillow uh, once everything settles down. When you log into Zillow from your dashboard, you will see Agent Hub. If you simply hover over those words, you will have the opportunity to go into listings. That will populate this, the My Listings, and it will default to active. We are going to take that same property and again click on Edit Listing. This time you actually have, oh, it signed him out. I don't know why it signed him out, but it signed him out. Just when I wanted everything live so I didn't have to take time to log into everything, it signs me out. Hopefully I spelled everything properly. Alrighty. Uh, don't ask why it did that, but it took me right in, and I don't mean to confuse anyone. What it actually did was took me where I wanted to go uh, without taking this route. So I'm actually going to do this again. Agent Hub, Listings, and then I'm going to edit the listing that I want to edit. Didn't realize they had a timeout in Zillow. Um, and then you're simply scooting down here. And here's your open house where you can add the information in. And then always on Zillow, down at the very bottom, it says update the for sale by agent. And that is exactly what you want to type in, is you want to type in the update the for sale. All that, I, I don't know why they make it so complicated. They could have just used the word update, um, but for some reason they decided to go with update for sale. And that is the proper way to do this. Um, and where I wanted to go also was on and this is where I wanted to go here, and that's what I said earlier, and I skipped it. Going back to Trulia, uh, because we are going into the promotion. So we've got right now, we had Realtor.com, we did our two MLSs. Again, I've got a lot, and I don't mean to go so fast, um, so I apologize. Um, we put in our open house in Trulia. We put in the open house in Zillow. So now let's talk about how to get this open house posted on social media. And then the two social media platforms that we're going to be working on today this way is um, Facebook, and we'll look at Twitter. Again, I don't know how many of my clients are on Twitter. I don't really think there are any. Uh, most of the people on Twitter are other agents. But from Trulia, and from Trulia only, I'm not the, they used to have it on Zillow. I'm not seeing it on Zillow anymore. Uh, but from Trulia, again, we're in my listings. We're in Manage Listings. I'm just going to click on it. Hopefully it didn't log me out again. We're in Manage Listings. It will default to your for sale. We're going to scoot down to the uh, property that I want to work with, which is the Great Bear in Pennsylvania. And there is a Share button. And you will see here when you hover over, you can share this listing, and you can share it from Facebook and Twitter. Now, again, what I said earlier is as long as this is syndicating through the company, and that is through your MLS and or Realty Executives International, sharing from here is fine. If this is an exclusive listing and you put it in manually, you need to talk to me before you do that because we need to make sure that we are compliant. But for right now, I am going to click on the Share on Facebook because this is where agents get themselves in trouble. They're not choosing where it needs to go. So we're here, we have a drop down where it says on your timeline. Now I am already logged into Facebook somewhere on this other tab. You can see that I am logged into Facebook up on top. Let me see if I can drag this down. Uh, here, there it is. So I'm already logged into my Facebook account. If you're not, you would get a login uh, window here. Uh, but because I logged in before I went live, because I want to show you what it looks like, um, I'm going to actually just post this property because it's not showing an open house and it's perfectly fine. Here where it has on your timeline, you want to take that drop-down menu and you want to choose on a page you manage. You need anything real estate related. Now this is not a commission rule, it's not a NAR rule, and it's not an MLS rule. It is a Facebook rule. Facebook terms of use, no commercial postings on private profiles. So I am going to show you best practice today how to get that where you want it 
and keep compliant with the rules for the Real Estate Commission, NAR, GSMLS, and Facebook. So we are going to choose, and if you don't have a page, I will be doing social media, um, and this is a head herder as well, uh, live in June uh, in Fairfield. So we're going to be choosing on a page you manage. Now I am going to, I have a couple of pages here, but I'm going to choose my own, and that is Sussex County Homes. So I am now on a page you manage. I have no idea why this is. I do not want it on New Jersey Property Homes. I want it on Sussex County Homes. Sussex County Homes, thank you. Um, on a page you manage, I'm posting as Sussex County Homes, and I'm posting to Sussex County Homes. This is actually a new feature coming from Trulia uh, because you could either post as yourself, you can post as another page to a page. Uh, so here I want it posted to my Sussex County Homes. That is my Facebook page, and I can show it to you. As soon as we finish posting, you'll see exactly what it looks like. Um, and I am posting as that page. And uh, you can put say something here. Um, again, if you wanted to do an open house, you can have please vis visit me and make it a little more standoutish uh, as far as the open house. But from there, as long as this is on a page you manage and posting as whom you want it to be from or to where you want it to go, um, and again, should be a business page, I am simply going to click on Share Link, and there you go. Now, to see what that looks like, we are actually going to go to my page, which is this one. This is live, and you will see right here, um, that post just came out just now. This will fill in uh, with a photo. It says it comes directly from Trulia, and where we're compliant is a minute somebody clicks on that, there is a link back. So if anybody clicks from there, it takes them right to that page on Trulia. So again, best practice, that. Now the other option, and the reason I'm going to stay in here, is the other thing that you can do, and again, keeping you compliant without just typing it in manually, is going to your website. We're going to go right here, and this is Mike's website. Going to your website, searching one of your properties, and taking the link from up top. Now I need you to be mindful when you take that link to make sure that it is going to your page. So you will see here it is going to Agent Michael Spinetta and that will take people right to his web page, not the company, not international. Simply click one time up here. You're going to right click. You're going to copy. And then I am going back to my business page. And actually what I'll do is I'll go to his. Uh, because I do manage his as well. So this is Mike's business page on Facebook. And I am simply going to right click and I'm going to click on paste. And you will see in a split second, uh, it will have realty executives in here. I can put whatever information I want. Um, I can add a photo if I wanted to add the front photo in here. So that's two ways to keep compliant and post. I don't think this is as pretty as the Trulia one. Um, but the one positive on that, and I'm going to go in and do it, is if somebody clicks on here, oh, I didn't post it, so it's not going to function. I'm, af I'm afraid to post. Uh, the heck with it. Let's post it. So there we go. We've got this posted. Actually, this is, uh, this is a picture of, his home, of the home page. But if I click on this at this point, or a consumer clicks on it, you will see that it took me not to Trulia, where they can go off and find other properties, but right to his prime agent website, that's where you want them. Because now they can obviously go in and look at more information on this property. And if they decide, uh, you know what, that's not for me, they've got all the search functions right here. So now you're keeping them on your website and hopefully capturing that lead. So again, um, I will, when we get into social media, social media, go in and show you how to change this. You can do the front photo of the house here uh, before you post. Uh, and it has, again, the information you can add. You can actually click on Edit if you wanted to, um, and just click on Edit Post, and you can put your information up top here uh, just to make it a little bit more what this is because this is just very generic right here. Uh, put the property information, but again, use that link to get them to your web page. So we have covered, we're looking at promoting now on Executive Edge uh, and promoting on the newsletter. So I'm going to hop back. Uh, just because I'm trying to get a lot of information in and we're already at 1034 um, and just see and open it up right now for questions. If anybody has any questions on this section so far, um, you can go ahead and just go back here again if it lets me. Um, type it in the chat box and then I'm going to move forward from there 
and we're going to get into real quick promoting on Executive Edge e-newsletter, and then we're going to go into where to find uh, information, town information, branded, um, and color to have. So I don't see anything in the chat box right now. Um, I'm going to go back to share my screen live. Hopefully everybody's still here. We're going to click on OK, and here we are. So now we're talking Executive Edge. Again, not an Executive Edge training. We did that yesterday. Um, I will do it again. And I am going to click on Marketing Material. And I am going to use the keyword search because it's something that I actually did not remember to go over yesterday. So if I click on here and I type in Open House, and there is a little magnifying glass, Search by Keyword, I am hoping that we, yes, it will bring you all of the pieces that are specific or related to um, open houses. So you will see here what not to do. So there is some marketing material here that if you wanted to print it out in color to have on, by all means. And then we've got um, some open house thank yous. You've got some open house uh, co-branded flyers. I'm going to click on, uh, let's just go to, one photo. I'm going to click on this one and just show you how quickly we can create an uh, active silver light. This is standard for my computer. Just wait for that piece to open. And uh, sending out open house uh, again to your sphere, to the people that are receiving your newsletter, to other agents, combination of all of them, completely up to you. I'm just waiting for the piece. Just want to show you how quickly this piece can be created um, and sent out. So going to give it just a quick second. And with the newsletter, you've got two, while this is loading, we'll talk about it a little bit, you've got two options. You can add it, um, you can add, obviously add it as a listing and have it come up in the sidebar um, if that's what you wanted to do. Um, I am going to click on uh, my email footer here. The postcard front is standard. The postcard back I typically, when I'm using a postcard and I'm emailing the postcard, I will go in and I will remove all of this because what happens is um, it will show up as a second screen underneath. Whoop, come on, you can do this. Remove, remove. Let's be going with this stuff here. This is not letting me remove that, but that's fine. Uh, that's just going to show up at the bottom. So if I wanted to go in here, I'm going to replace my image. I'm just taking anything. Again, this is not an Executive Edge class. This is really just a quick um, just to show you how things function. I don't know if these are actually here and I'm just not seeing them yet because I'm doing this quickly. Uh, actually, this is from the training yesterday. All right, so we've got the open house here. Um, I've got my email footer. I can put my contact, whatever information here, the open house. So let's just say um, visit 54 Woodport Road. Again, there's a million pieces in here. I just picked one. There's probably a lot nicer pieces in here. Um, and whatever time, you're going to click on Save, and you're going to email. I'm actually going to exit out of this for just one quick second because I do want to pick – come on. And it's working a lot quicker for me today. Um, let's just say we go into this one, and we click on Create and Edit. This is Open Door. Uh, you will see that these pieces – and this would be an email um, – piece that, would, that is set up for that. So this is a lot nicer here. So here if you wanted to go in, you would have open house. This is thanks for dropping by. So here's your thank you, which we would go in later. Um, and you've got your greeting here. Uh, but if you wanted to go into the pieces that I like for this type of email, if you want to get crazy, marketing emotion, not going to go into that. We did talk about that during executive uh, edge training yesterday. The e-greetings email, uh, these are the ones that I really like, the real estate cards, because they are fit. They are you know, right in there with fitting into an email where people do not have to scroll. Um, so if you can get something in here with everyday or real estate cards um, and just get house key, so we can do any one of these, appreciate introductions, uh, but we can do any one of these pieces and then send that out just like we did yesterday um, to, a, um, to potential buyers, to your sphere, to your um, e-newsletter, and to other realtors. The other place that we were talking about, an e-newsletter, again, I have said, if it's already a listing, you will have that in your Manage Listings. You will click into your listing, again, not doing an Executive Edge class today, um, but simply add on New Listing. However, where I would consider going is your articles, your Manage Articles. You can add an article 
here and put an image in here. And this is just a simple copy and paste as far as an image. And you can set it up. And let's just do open house. And again, I know it's not easy to do, but let's just do open house uh, May, what is that, third? 1P to 4P. And then here and here we're going to do 50, 54. I sell the office a lot, sorry. All right, so we've got that, we've got this, and what we have to do, and I know this gets a little complicated, so you may not want to get crazy with it, um, but what we have to do here <clears throat> is actually go online and find the photo. It has to be so you can go to your, and again, because I use 54 Woodport Road, but what I'll do is I'll just go to Mike's, and I am going to copy image and go back. And again, this is just to show you your options. Let me just go here where my box should be. Somewhere over the rainbow. There we go. And hope. There we go. Uh, so simply copying it from the internet and putting it in here, you can get a front photo. This is not as pretty as it could be. Obviously, you can go in, you can change your font, you can make it centered, you can make it bold, um, you can do whatever you need to here, and then simply click on save. And when I preview my e newsletter, rather than an article coming up on the top, um, you will see that I have, and I obviously went to the bottom, uh, and I would go in and move it around. Um, you would see here that I can actually feature the open house. And just to make everybody's life easy, uh, what I'm going to do is just say one and save order of articles to make that my very, hopefully, my first one. Did it do my first one? It did my second one. So I want to go up one. And it is just not liking me today. All right, preview the newsletter. Hopefully zero comes up. I don't know why it just did that. There we go. So now we have open house May 3rd. We have the address in here because that is what I put in the title. That's very important. And if the client clicked on more, it would open up and it would populate in here. So that is a way to feature it on your newsletter. Okay, um, we have got promoting out of the way. And now I want to just touch on, and again, I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible. Um, I'm going to go in just one quick sidebar and see if there are any questions. I'm not seeing anything in the chat, so we're going to keep moving along. And I'm going to go back to my live drive. And we're going to talk about what we're going to keep on site. Now, I know Diana had gone into, and I agree with, the disclosures, and whether it's lead-based paint or seller, obviously property flyer. But what else do we want to have on that site? What if we have a buyer that's coming in, they're not working with a realtor. Um, you can keep a buyer packet, one of your buyer packets from Toolkit, not going in there right now, um, but you can absolutely have that. But stats, stats are what people want to see. Um, and again, I spoke about this a little bit. Uh, we're lucky that both um, Flex as well as our GSMLS, um, I understand that someone, uh, some of the um, uh, local uh, associations, both SCAR and Passaic and NCJR for here. Um, I believe Pike Wayne has it on their site. In fact, I know they do. Um, Pike Wayne has it on their site as well. We're looking for those 10Ks. Um, and there are, and didn't notice it until I was playing around with it yesterday, several different um, options as far as that goes. I am going to use GSMLS for now because it's right in front of my face and a lot easier for me to tool around. Uh, but I do know I'm just going to click into go into Flex, um, and they have their stats right here. So you can absolutely get stats and information from there as well. Uh, but I am going to go into GSMLS, and I am going to use the Analysis tab. And I was shocked that most of the people in the class yesterday did not notice that they've added the NJ uh, and Najar municipal stats and of course, I'm going to talk a little bit about area statistics as well. First place I want to go is here. And we're going to select a year, and that is, of course, going to be this year because we want current information. Uh, it's always a month behind, so March is as much as you're going to be able to get. And I am going to, uh, let's go to Passaic, yeah, we'll go to Passaic County for now. What the heck? All right, so we are looking at our towns, and then we have the opportunity for all towns. So I am going to click on West Milford just to show you what that looks like. And that is simply going to open up a PDF. And you can access this information. It used to be that you, could, you had to log in 
to Najar, which is now NJ Realtor, to get this in New Jersey. Um, they finally followed suit, as most of the MLSs did, because our MLS also requires you to be a Realtor. Um, you have access to it right through your MLS, which I find a lot easier to deal with. So if I were holding the open house in West Milford, these are stats specifically for that town. Um, so I would have this, and I would print out a few uh, and have them on hand to talk about local market trends because obviously that's very impressive. Uh, I'm going to go back to my MLS. If I chose all towns, I got to tell you, I fell in love with this and I only found it a couple of weeks ago. I assumed that everything in here was the same as it was in Najar. And you're going to see really quickly that that is not the case. If I click on all towns, and I may have shown this before because I've, I'm in love with this, um, you will find a 15-page report on the county. Um, and it goes into graphs and charts. Uh, it is, I mean, just if, as you go through here, a lot of the times I will use this in my pre-listing packet if you're going after a FISBO. Um, this is great information to have. Uh, and again, great information to have. I spoke about this yesterday, uh, Sussex County Day, hello. Um, you're going to want to print that Sussex County, and you can have all of these indicators. Uh, don't have, I mean, I know we have a few, but not a lot. Um, and this is, again, Passaic. So Passaic might have a lot more going on as far as the adult communities because uh, they have more of them. They've got uh, co uh, condominiums or townhomes um, that qualify. So you'll get some more information here. Um, on the adult communities. And then the very last page, again, love, um, is just a total market overview. So even if you simply just had this page, uh, it was, it's well worth it as far as key metrics go. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind when you're looking for um, open house material, things to have. Um, I will, when I do some of these classes, show you how to, I know a lot of people have the stickers, so if you want to use the labels with your contact information, that's great. Um, I do go in and use Adobe uh, Reader um, and stamp them with my contact information, and that is perfectly okay as long as you don't cover up the information that shows where it actually came from. Uh, so however you want to do that, that's, uh, that's up to you. I'm going to go back again. Um, and I am going to show you that real quickly because I did not, did I log into that one? Probably one of the only ones I haven't logged into, but I'm going to uh, not cover that page. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to cover over Flex at this point, not to open up any more tabs. So where I'm going right now, and I just wanted to show you the difference. Um, if I go to njrealtor.com, they have a county page that's not the 15. It is single. It looks more like the town page. I'm going to log in. If you've not been to these websites, please, um, unless you're in Pennsylvania, please get in there um, and create a profile. The information in that you that you get in here is just invaluable, um, especially on the uh, NJ Realtor and the Realtor.org, which we will get into um, today. And I'm just going to see. Right, I'm trying to remember which word I use. There we go. And hopefully I have my password right on here. Sometimes I make it shorter than others, and I think this one was the long one. So hopefully it will say welcome, and it does. So going into the research tab, we're looking, and again, for anyone in New Jersey, this replaced Najar.com. It's NJ Realtors now. And we're going to click on monthly housing market stats. Um, and you will see here this one is required login. Now those are the towns, but that is also the same information that you're getting out of GSMLS. Where I wanted to go on the, on the public one um, is the county. And I'm just going to click on Sussex County here and open it up. And you will see it is not that 15-page uh, report, which I love. Um, it is simply a one-page county report. So depending on how much ink you want to burn, um, this is also great if you're doing something that you want county level. You can have both. You can you know, be at an open house and have the one for the town and the one for the county in case they are not married to the town that you're in um, and you have the opportunity to pick up a buyer. Um, again, you can put your labels on there. Um, I personally use Adobe, and I will be teaching that in one of the live classes. So uh, information I have here, the one other thing, and I know I keep flashing by this, uh, and I am going to get into it in a, in a second, um, but the other thing that I wanted to go over was NAR, the RPR reports. And when I did the live training, we had a full class for that. Um, I did go into how, uh, but we've got a neighborhood option right here, which will, and we're just going to click on, who am I going to pick on today? Let's go to Montville. 
We are going to click on Montville, New Jersey, and I am going to simply type that in and click on search. And then I am going to create a report. I don't really need to see what's in there. And you'll see here the market activity report from that town. We're going to do both. We're going to do uh, neighborhood and market activity report. Uh, but the first one I want to go into is this one, which is the market activity report. Uh, you see, I'm just going to show you the sample here. Actually, if you hold on one second, I can show you what it looks like here. I did one for Sparta as well. So here is what the market activity report would look like. And again, simply going into your NAR RPR here and punching in the, I'm going to go back to neighborhood, popping in the, come on Donna, let me go back to the home page, popping in or clicking on the neighborhood, putting the neighborhood that you want in here, which in that particular case I did um, Montville, clicking on search and create a report. Uh, Montville, New Jersey, clicking on search clicking on create a report. It defaults to the one that I put on. So there's my market activity. Actually, it didn't. It went on to market activity. Uh, you can have this available here. Um, I click on the more details. So you can choose what you want, um, mobile and manufactured, farm and ranch if you don't want that, multifamily. If you just want the single family, you have options when you click on more details. You simply can put an enter a name. I wouldn't do that in this case because you just want your information and you do come out branded. You click on the have read and get report and what you will get, and I am going to, this is the market activity report, um, is you get here in this particular case, depending on what you click on and off, uh, 21 pages of market. Now you can just do one, have it on the property, great way to get somebody's contact information. If they read through it, Hey, Mr. Buyer, hey, Mr. Potential Seller, if you'd like one done for you, I'd be more than happy to drop it off. I'd be more than happy to send you an email. If you just give me your contact information, I'll get it right over to you so that you always have one on the property um, and a potential way to get some contact information for either a buyer or a seller by offering to get them this report directly. Dropping it off for me, Best case scenario, email would be secondary, um, but you'll see all of the information. It has the price changes. It has market activity. You'll see here you've got your current for sale. If you were in my RPR class, you would know the difference between the colors. Um, but again, a great piece to have on site um, and a way to get contact information. Have one, let them read through it, and offer it to the client coming in. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at is neighborhood report. And this one I'm going to show you real quick. Same basic premise. You can click on more details. Um, hide anything that you want. Um, this is a real short one, so I leave everything checked. Um, again, I would leave this particular portion blank. Uh, the I have read. You're clicking on get report. It's all done and branded for you as long as you have your profile in here. And again, what that looks like is... Here. Here is my neighborhood report. You'll see this is as simple as nine pages. Uh, and again, same situation. You could offer you can have one on site um, and offer to um, put one together custom for that particular potential buyer or seller, provided they give you uh, information to get it to them. And this is terrific information here. It's a lot shorter. Uh, but you'll see here we've got nine pages of basic information, household income brackets, really, really great stuff. So now we've got our, uh, we've promoted our open house, we're at our open house, and we've got some municipal stats. Uh, we've got the RPR, either neighborhood or market activity or both. Uh, now we're going to talk about thank yous um, and follow-ups. So we're getting those people in on the sign-in sheets. We're getting hopefully either an email or, a, or a, a cell phone number or both. Both is always the best way to go. Um, and I think we went in and just showed you real quickly how to do that on the marketing material. Con um, obviously, again, and everything leads back to the, the uh, previous sessions, talking about the time blocking. Um, my Monday time blocking would be sending out thank yous or following up for the open houses and the people that visited. Uh, even if you were taking someone out, you can use this for a follow-up if you're working with a buyer or met for a listing presentation. You can use the same pieces. Um, so the contact manager here is where you're going to start, um, and you would sit down with those sign-in sheets and simply add those contacts. When you're adding the contacts, that would be the time to add them to a group. 
um, because that will help you uh, when you're adding them to campaigns at some point in the future. Uh, so that will, you know, adding them to a group when you're adding them in is your best possible uh, practice as far as that goes. But we're going to stick to marketing material, and we are going to simply here uh, type in a thank you because we're going to be thanking them for either an appointment or thanking them for a visit. Um, and again, same thing here. Uh, they've got how many? 78 results. Um, in the thank you, I would like to see what this one is. I know the pictures aren't coming up, but it will in a minute. Hopefully Silverlight will catch up with me, and I don't have too many things. I'm not seeing anybody coming in on text, so I'm assuming we're all good in here. And I know uh, I'm trying to keep this under an hour, but again, I've got so much stuff um, that I wanted to pack in, um, and I'd like to get that out there. So I'm just going to preview this because everyone knows by now to click on Edit. Um, so I'm just going to do an email preview here. Uh, to show you just what some of the pieces would look like here. Again, uh, it's a simple thank you, um, and you've got your information here. This one actually says, thank you for visiting my website. That can be changed. This has got zero, so you may not want to. Um, and you get to put and make it personal. So if you had a conversation with this person, and hey, you know, I, I got to go. I can't stay. It's my daughter's birthday. Hope you had a great birthday. Make it as personal as you can um, and send them individually. I wouldn't do these in bulk. Yes, if I'm sending a thank you for sending my broker open to uh, agents, it can be generic because, quite frankly, we don't have to impress them. But when you're sending it to a potential client, um, I would absolutely make it as personal as possible and only send um, one. Uh, so that, that's uh, as simple as that goes. And again, I'm not going to follow through the whole thing because we've done that. Uh, but that is using the executive edge to send up the thank yous or do some follow-up for your open house. The other place, and last but not least, and then we're just going to get into some more uh, stats and questions, is mobile marketing. Uh, for anyone that was in my mobile class, you have a communicator tab. And again, I'm going to show you quickly how this works, but I'm just, that's as all much as it's going to get is quickly. Uh, we are going to choose our contacts. So I'm going to click on contacts, and I am going to torture probably my last few people. I think I went into this the last time. Um, on the call here, I don't know where we're going to go in. Uh, well, we'll just do Anthony. We'll do Anthony. We'll talk to Anthony, no problem. Um, and just go through really quickly. I thought I had – oh, there she is. All right, we're going to do Kathy. So just because I know certain people are on the call, I'm just going to do this so that you can see how it follows through. Um, I am going to add select, add selected. And again, you can do a whole group. So if you had a group in here and you want to do the whole group, if you simply click on them, you would do select all, add selected, and then finished. And you will see here. And you're going to craft your message. Now, there are some te templates. I would attach, hopefully you have that particular property that you did the open house in your mobile. I would attach that property and simply clicking on that property and add to properties. And that will include a link. Uh, and then we've got some property templates. You can create your own open houses, sold notice, recruiting. Uh, in this particular case, I mean, you can click on open house and then type it in. Um, it will eventually go through. So you at, here I would just say thank you. Whoops, hello. And I will have to narrow it down because I'm going to get into bringing it to like a thank you for visiting. And we're going to have 54 um, on Sunday or yesterday. Hopefully it's yesterday because you're doing this the day after on Sunday, and then call me, and then the link. So thank you for visiting 54 Woodport Road. You can get as detailed as you want. Obviously, you have to watch your characters. Uh, this is reserved for the property link, so when that goes out, this is outbound texting. Again, 98% of text messages are read um, and not just deleted. We are compliant with rules and regulations, so there is an opt-out when you do this. Um, but you'll see here the insert link. So this will not only say thank you and have your contact information, but it will also have a link to the mobile version of that property. Simply here, clicking on Finished, and I'm going to send my broadcast now. And that was it. So now I sent a thank you through our mobile with a link 
And again, they'll have the opportunity. And somebody did ask me, um, and there has been an enhancement made. So when you, when Kathy, when you get that, if this, uh, if you've got people in there, you can show them what it looks like. There is an opportunity when you send one particular property through our mobile. Um, there is actually uh, two buttons up on top. One will say "Search Surrounding Area," um, so they can end up in your mobile app searching, which is <clears throat> absolutely awesome. Um, I do have, um, I'm just going to see if I can click in here. Um, I am, I'm going to go back to, well, I, I do need to share my screen for this one, uh, one last thing. Um, I have some links, as always, I do offer. Um, Realtor.com has a 10 tips to prepare uh, your home for an open house, um, and that is for you to give clients. Um, and then Realtor.org, um, has a field guide to open houses for agents. Um, I don't have the links open here, but I can absolutely um, get them to you. Uh, I will send them to everyone that's logged in. If you're in one of the offices, and I'm just going to go back because I am looking at my outline to make sure that I had to write it down to make sure that I haven't forgotten anything, um, and I don't think that I have. So again, opening up the chat right now, we're going to wrap it up. We're into an hour. Um, if you want to ask me a question, by all means, pop it in here. Uh, if it's uh, too long or if you're not really comfortable with that, you can send me an email. I will send everyone on the call the two links. Uh, and if you're in an office and you're not logged in so I don't see your name, pop me an email if it's something that you're interested in, and I will get them out to you. It's just, again, simple links. They don't require passwords. Um, and it does have, especially the Realtor.org field guides, I love those field guides, um, they have some really good information. So if I don't see any questions coming in, and at this point I don't, um, I am going to wrap it up and let everybody get out there. It's a beautiful day, and uh, hopefully you'll get uh, some broker open. So thanks, guys. Have a great day.